Thank you, my, my friends. And first, I will also say that it's an uh, honor to speak here. And uh, I will start by saying that I'm not an African expert. Mm -hmm. And my topic here is more about uh, what type of political will we, we are having here in Europe to influence, influence in Africa. I believe that I'm a very average European politician. I have made, during my career, few trips to Africa. Um, I was seven years as a prime minister of Finland, and then during that time I made maybe 100 or 150 um, trips and conferences, meetings all around the world, but only a few times in Africa. And it, it tells quite a lot. It tells quite a lot about about the, um, about the contact level between Europe and uh, Africa, about business opportunities in Africa and, and so, so on. And, uh, and that worries, worries me. And my actually, in recent years, I have uh, started more and more to think about that how we can focus in Europe much more to, to Africa. And, and regular European politicians need to become in, interested in Africa. Africa is the question, it is maybe one of the biggest single issue of this century, in which the la largest challenges of our time, climate change, population increase, terrorism, globalization, corruption, and poor management, lack of democracy, etc., are united. The challenges of Africa are known, but it is there enough broad political will in Europe to act. And this is there sufficient skill in Europe for building the kind of cooperation that will bring efficiency into our activity. It's a question of if citizens give their support for Europe to focus in a sufficient way on Africa's matters, and can the kind of political leadership be found that lifts Africa's issues to the front lines of politics in Europe? When I told people that I was coming here and asked them, also in Facebook, uh, what subjects would be good to present here, I received useful observations very much. People are interested about Africa. They realize that the challenges are uh, actually increasing all the time. And for example, about the list which I got. First was, it has not been possible to limit population increase anywhere without electric lights. Education, the status of women and girls, clean water, the need for forestation. The EU and its member countries use waste amounts of money for development cooperation and distribute it to a large number of places without coordination. Each country has its own politics. This was one opinion. More children are born in Nigeria than in all of the EU. We do not set enough preconditions for our support. It would be good to replicate how many Asian countries have emerged from poverty. This type of examples people give People have a good idea of the extent of the problems, but it should be said straight out also that some of the respondents felt that it would be good for us to concentrate on our own matters and let the Africans take care of their own problems. This dem demonstrates the political setup of today, in which, in on one side, cooperation and isolation divide politics ideologically. It is unfortunately not clear if a sufficient political will can be reached together in Europe and if the support of the citizens can be obtained for it. The EU recognizes all the challenges that Africa is facing. The most recent example of this was the high-level conference of Sahel on February 23rd. That was attended by the head of governments from nearly every EU country. 25 presidents or prime ministers from EU took part to that conference. The mutual dependency between security and development rose up in the speeches at the meeting. Many also brought up the necessity of good administration and respect for human rights in order to achieve stability. 
the co conference was o able to raise over 400 million euros in assistance for the needs for security forces. The problems of the Sahel have a direct link to the migra migrant stream heading into Europe. It is easy to see that there is a broad mutual political understanding for ex ex exerting influence on the reasons for the migration. In questions regarding immigration, this is near, nearly the only subject for which there is a sufficiently broad mutual understanding, at least on the level of principle. The Munich Conf Security Conference is another example of the topically of the Af African theme. As part, part of the security matters in the conference background information, there was appended an analysis of Africa and African development matters, the, and the report, report stated. The African century narrative appeared to, to, to be in full swing when African countries' financial resources peaked in 2012. Since then, they have been declining, and Africa's expected demographic dividend seems li less likely to materialize. As the president of the African Development Bank, Akinwumi Adesina, argued, no wonder Africa's youth, our assets, take huge risks migrating to Europe. We must create greater opportunities for our youth right at home. If African countries fail to do so, for the approximately 20 million youth, youths entering the continent's labor force every year, a ballooning youth population, deprived of quality education, gainful employment and political voice, could le well lead to widespread unrest and destabilization instead of boosting pro pro productivity. When I was a schoolboy 40 years ago, or more, 45 years ago. In my school, we also celebrated the UN's population year in the beginning of 1970s. Its theme sta stayed with me. It was, take care of the people, and the population will take care of itself. This fact has worked everywhere, and it is also the clearest direction for Europe in relation to Africa. The great challenge for Europe is to create unified policy for matters connected with immigration and to seek out, out cooperation partners in Africa. In order to keep up political le legitimacy for actions in EU member states in relation to immigration and Africa, the citizens need to see that the actions of the states and of the European Union must be well organized, following the rules, respecting human rights, and achieving results. In 19th century, 50 million migrants moved from Europe to North Af America, just like Stefan told us, even from Sweden it was about 1 million. It was a huge amount of people, 50 million people, and I believe that then the European population was, was, was something about maybe 200 million. At that time, it, America or USA, it was a land of future or land of promises. But nowadays, Europe cannot be the continent of the future of, of for Africa in this century, but instead Africa itself must be made the continent of the future. This ba basic premise for action must be made clear in order for us to be able to commit everyone for the solution of perhaps the greatest question of our time. The de development of the past decades in Asia can guide us in regard to what is also to be pursued in Africa. The main risk is that private businesses must be involved. There are many reasons for the race, rise of, race of Asia, but the utilization of globalization with the help of private direct investments is the greatest individual factor in the rise of Asia. International development assistance has naturally had an effect, 
but on adequate scale has been generated from investments. In the European conversation regarding development aid, in many countries, alongside traditional development assistance, there is emphasis on fund activity, in which minor public funds are used to entice private investors to become involved. Quite usual is that one euro of public money can s start nine, nine euros of private money. Many who, who support traditional development assistance criticize this because private capital is not channeled into the poorest countries or the poorest areas. In this, they are right, but they cannot dispute the necessity of private investment. The resources of European businesses are not sufficient alone. European, American and Asian businesses need to find Africa together and in competition with each other. In, in Finland, we have a government-owned Fin Fund that strives to participate in investments that are especially directed toward energy projects, forestry policy and food agriculture. They indeed say that the control of Perth, rate, Perth rates has not been achieved anywhere without electric lights. In my opinion, it has been able to answer the question quite well of how it is possible to direct pro 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 projects toward the poorest countries. It is necessary to pay attention to the ability to invest. Earlier, I already described how financial res resources have been decline declining during this decade. This is illustrated well by the fact that the oil income of Af African nations receiving income from oil have decreased to under half of, of the 2011 level. If the development cooperation policy of the EU and its member states would be created now, would we really establish 28 separate policies and common activity alongside these? Or would it be organized in some other way? The question is, does political will and lead leadership ability exist among EU countries which, which um, to increase coordination substantially? Is there also political will to let go of the ties of the old colonial period? The, EU, the European Union is preparing now for a new five-year period starting in 2019. Africa is to be raised up as one of the most important matters as part of the appointment of a new commission. And at the same time, a member is to be chosen into commission whose main area should be responsibility in also stated with this one word, Africa. It would elevate the importance of Africa matters in the work of the whole union, and it would also help coordinate the work done by member states. A substantial part of this or her, his or her work loud would indeed be directed toward EU member countries. When I have asked around how the rise of many countries in Asia from poverty to growth was realized, the most times the answer is globalization and private investments. Official development assistance has had its own role, but foreign direct investment was the main driver. Development started after Japan rose up after the war. Investments then in Malay Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong and South Korea were the start of development, which the current generation can see in the scope of world history. This Asian development model would already be happening in Africa if it were easy. The circumstances are different, but I believe that the same basic model is also most efficient in Africa, the combination of globalization and investment. The question needs to be posed as part of this, how can Europe create demand for African goods to, uh, through trade policy? 
I'm not an expert in trade policy and I cannot answer this myself. Also, the persons who are responsible for trade policy in the EU are not primarily th thinking about the development of, uh, of Africa, but have other priorities in mind. One question that divides EU countries is their attitude toward migration. This division has its well-known reasons. This division reflects the willingness of different countries to share responsibility for immigration. All are ready on the level of principle, however, to exert influence on the root reasons. A political will must be built from this common willingness in order to exert influence on a broad scale and with good coordination on African matters. It is important that as the member states prepare for a new five-year term, they set Africa in a strong position in their own strategies. The European political parties are to raise the theme in the EU elections and make it priority when planning in such a way that the member states will also need to take a position on it. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I would like to, <coughs> to thank Mr. Varhanen for the very interesting speech and upon and touching upon a very, very sensitive issue in such a clarity. Uh, because the relations of Europe to Africa and vice versa are not only in the economic field, they are also in the illegal immigration field, in the economic migration field. So it's a very complicated issue. And uh, I would like to congratulate for the very exact and understandable positioning that has been made. Being such, I'm sure that there are certain questions. And uh, I would like the lady from Africa to open the floor. She's from the United States. You're from United States. States. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> My parents are from Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Like Obama. Like Obama. <laughs> <laughs> China more so than they do in the West. So what is your response to this? Yes, my, my last visit in um, Mozambique was such that I saw, or my guides, they saw some new highways and bridges and hotels and then said that all of them have been built by Chinese. <laughs> and uh, and he, he told that everything ac actually in Mozambique, which is really new and modern and in good shape, is made by Chinese. Of course, I'm, I'm not going to analyze uh, what purposes or motivation China has to that, but, but, the, the, but the fact is that when I ask that where are European um, uh, footpr footprint in, in Mozambique, of course there are a lot, but nothing like what Chinese ha has made. So I, I think that um, that, um, of course, we had to ask about what are the motivation behind, behind China. But when, if they are doing more, with more, more concrete and more than we are doing, then we should not have a reason to criticize them. So we had to compete with them. We had to compete with them and um, do our policy with our own model. Model. So, so I actually welcome, as I said in my speech, I, I would welcome the American, European, Asian businesses to invest to Africa. And uh, because when, when the Asian countries after Japan's uh, rise, so this happened in 1960s and 70s, then it was mostly about the Japanese, US and European in investments to many Asian countries. Now the, there is a difference because now also the huge Asian businesses can take part in, in Africa.
It seems that the Chinese are everywhere. They are, they is, are. Uh, they are in Lufthansa now. They bought the Piraeus port in Greece. So it seems that they are not only in Africa, they are in... Yeah, yeah. So, another question. Yes. The problem is that China has a surplus in the trade. Mm. You have surplus, but the United States has negative balance. If China will repeat the mistake of Japan, will bring this money to China, they will increase exchange rate, they will increase living standard in China, and they will get no, less competitive. Yeah. But yeah. President Trump is doing, he is trying to wire it. China has no choice. It is obligatory to invest this money in the, these countries, even if they want, they will not give any any cent on, on those. Oh, yes. Excellent. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is they have no choice. Yes. Because with the United States, they have plus 300 billion dollars. What to do with these little dollars? To bring to China, they will destroy Chinese economy. Like Spain, mm -hmm. 600 years yes. ago, importing gold, yeah. spoiled everything in Spain, etc. Yeah. etc. You know, but, well, I, 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 I would like to, to, mm, uh, uh, to know your thoughts on the following. You know, the balance of uh, FDI now is negative for devel developed countries, mm. and this is positive for developed yeah. countries. We have three trillion investments per year, FDI. Mm. Two trillion from poor countries are going to the rich countries. And just one trillion is going back to the poor countries. <coughs> and the process, yeah. you know, uh, uh, the, these poor countries are getting exhausted. And after that, rich countries, they are obliged to think how to help mm. them, to assist them. And they didn't succeed, and these people are coming to the rich countries. You, know, the, you, you understand? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a vicious but circle. I mean, huh? It's a vicious circle. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. and that cycle is not efficient. Yeah, it's, no, it's not efficient. Yeah. You know, uh, like you feel the, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, like you feel the barrel mm. in our bottom. You know, yeah. what is your thought on that? <laughs> yes, uh, your your both analysis, I, I think they are right. And the last uh, second second one, it only tells that. That uh, uh, capital, of course, uh, want the best product, productivity, and uh, and um, it acts. Um, the reasons are are in that, and uh, but um, but um, I'm I'm sure that, of course, we, we should not discuss Africa like a one continent <laughs> because there are yeah. fifty three countries. It tells quite a lot about an av average uh, European politician that if I should uh, make a list of African countries, I couldn't do it exactly. There would I, I would probably miss many many of the countries. But we are we are looking too much Africa as a one 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 piece. It is it is not. But but in in, in uh, Africa, I'm sure that I'm sure that because of the uh, uh, the the young f f working force which they will have much much more than any other area in in world is having they will get investments but but we had somehow we had to push also from political side it because we don't have now too much time it's 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 actually um, time time is um, going going out quite quite soon already now we know for example about the uh, about the migration which comes from uh, Lib Libya to Italy, 40% comes from one country, Nigeria. And uh, so I can see that in some African countries, there, there is already in the people's mind happening the same, what probably happened in the 19th century in, in Europe, that they feel that, yes, we can leave our country and go to somewhere else. And uh, nowadays, in the time of Twitter and Facebook and all social media and uh, info information with, which we can get, this change in people's mind, it can happen re re really rapi rapidly. That's why we don't have time. But for me, yes. Um, I, I know I have an opportunity tomorrow to offer my um, opinion on the um, you Can you introduce yourself, please? Can you introduce yourself? One of the comments from different um, 
people is that the challenge of Africa is basically the challenge of leadership. Um, in, in your speech, you didn't mention much about that, but mm -hmm. I would like to hear your opinion as to whether you have the same position. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I, I mentioned the in the very beginning, the, the lack of democracy and, um, and uh, not good enough governance and, and so, so on. And these are, of course, these are the one basic reasons why, why for example, to the uh, foreign investors, Africa is not such, a, or many countries are not such that um, the, the interest to invest is very, in very, very high. I visited in Tanz Tanzania in uh, 2000. Then I, I think, and uh, I can't remember the prime minister's name who was then in Tanzania. But then we discussed a long time when we were moving with car to the next places, and um, and um, I, I remember that very well. How he how, how he told that now they had then about 42 million people, and 90 percent are living in, in countryside in rural areas. And when first tractor comes to rural village, it means that nine of ten lose jobs job. lose. Yes. And, and he said that they can offer a little bit in construction works in cities, but not very much. And how to, how to create uh, local jobs, local jobs to, 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 uh, um, to s s small, small businesses, a new jobs, it, it will be a big issue. And most of the time we discussed about the, especially young boys who, f who lose the job in the uh, farming village, mm. what kind of risk there is for the um, radicalization. And uh, you can pr probably tell more, but in Tanzania you don't yet have this, that problem, but, but probably you, 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 you can uh, agree, agree that also, you have that risk if if you can't get some vision to the young genera young generation. A loud applause for Mr. Van Hannen. Thank you.